So it's a beautiful Saturday afternoon and I've decided that I'm gonna update my mailbox outside the front of my house because it's pretty grotty. So already this is not gonna go perfectly to plan because I thought I'd be able to take this whole thing out but it looks like they've actually built it directly into the fence. So. Uh, this is gonna need a clean, and then I gotta wire brush it down to get rid of some of the old flakes, and then I'm gonna replace the numbers so it looks nice and new. So here is our arsenal for today. First thing we gotta do is wash and scrub down the entire mailbox. The next thing we gotta do, because it's metal, is go at it with a wire brush to get rid of all the old paint and flaky bits that are coming off. Um, we got some sandpaper to make sure the edges are really nice and all the flaky bits are smooth before we start the actual painting. Um, we've got new numbers as well because although our numbers aren't broken, I probably want them directly on the mailbox because one of them, my pet peeves is I hate ambiguous um, door numbers. Like when you can't find what number house you're looking for just because you, the numbers aren't clear or um, brightly colored, etc. But this will stand out on our mailbox. And then some tape for around uh, our fence, because now I realize we can't actually take it out from where it is, so fingers crossed. The other bit I forgot to bring out is this Rust Guard um, spray paint by White Knight, um, and it's supposed to be a great spray paint for metal, as you can see on the front, and um, yeah, supposed to protect from rust, so that should be good for outside, which is a little bit crazy in springtime in Christchurch. <laughs> As you can see, a lot of scuzz is coming off right down there in the middle. Right, please excuse the mowing, but this is exactly why you need to okay. scrub this down really, really hard. Just to get rid of all of the lichen and moss and all of that goodness. So you have a nice, flat, smooth surface to spray paint onto. I recommend something sturdy. This is pretty great. Okay, this is looking pretty good. Um, this is the first clean. I then went over with a soft sponge to get into all the little nooks and crannies because, hello, this has never been cleaned. It's a mailbox. And then next up is our little wire brush friend. One thing I do need to note is that you do need to wait until this is fully dry before you start painting. Um, might be obvious, but just throwing it in there, let it dry before you do any next step. I've just finished wire brushing, and as you can see, it's gotten rid of heaps of the really flaky, gross bits. So I've been going ham at these for a little bit. Um, I'm gonna give it a little bit of a sand to get rid of the really hard edges so they don't show up as much with our spray paint, but who cares if it's perfect because it's outside and no one sees it. Um, so I'll let you know what that looks like. This is terrifying. I pulled off the old letters and it's a bunch of spider egg nests. Disgusting. After I pulled up the first one, I was afraid that there were going to be like a million little spiders that like crawl out onto my fence. <laughs> Yuck. Hey, but it's dry and we are now ready to tape up and spray paint. Wait, we are taped up and ready. Spray painting time. Covered all the major important bits that I don't want to have the glossy black. And we're ready to go. Oh, so exciting! Anthony getting some weeding then. And here's our first coat. Oh, I don't even know if that shows up on camera. <laughs> it's too dark. But, oh, I'll brighten it. There you go. If you can see, the first coat looks so cool. So excited! Shiny black, and then we're gonna do another coat soon and see how it turns out. 
So originally I wanted gold letter box numbers, um, but we couldn't find any that were just stick-ons. Um, but then when I pulled these little guys off as grotty as they are, underneath you can see they were originally kind of a brassy color. So Anthony's family suggested using this Chemico paste cleaner, because um, apparently you can use it on brass and things like that to get it all shiny. So I'm gonna do one of these letters and, or numbers, <laughs> and tell you how it turns out. And maybe do one entirely and then show you the comparison. So fingers crossed it works out. Oh, and just a side note, because someone called me out for not showing the after of this. Um, when I cleaned it, it did turn out a little bit better, but it's still pretty horrendous. So the plan is to completely knock out these tiles and then just put one big tile over top of here for the moment until we're able to properly redo the kitchen. So it is better, but it's not great. And I think it's just irreparable by this point. <laughs> With this stuff, I'm just gonna be using a little rag. And if I can show you one handed, it literally just looks like that. It looks like you're dipping into bubble gum or something, but it's a paste. And then you just jazz it all around the item. And um, hopefully it should work out. It's a little bit abrasive, which is how it's able to clean. Bada bing, bada boom. Recycle, reduce, reuse. Look how cool those are. Didn't have to spend a dime. Day two of our mailbox. I've just taped up the area as straight as I possibly can. And then these ones are super simple. It's just stick on ones. So I've made sure that the tape is roughly as tall as the numbers. And we're just gonna pop it on. And the finished product! Who would have thought that ugly old mailbox would have turned out to be something so beautiful? I think I got the 27 pretty straight. And then, yeah, once I clean up the edges, it looks a lot nicer. And just from the street, it's, it's a lot clearer that we're 27. I am stoked! And it was so cheap!